Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, listening as I'm uh, interrupting and kind of going with the flow with me. If you noticed in my last video, there was a lot of mess ups because <laughs> I have not read a romance novel or book, uh, I don't know, in decades. I mean, my reading is usually science and... Um, you know, the secrets of the universe and ancient texts and stuff like that. Like I have not read. <laughs> that's why I'm doing, that's why I'm doing fantasy. So we can sort of put that other part aside. We've done enough studying. We've done enough of that stuff. Like it's time to get into creativeness like this. So uh, welcome back everyone. My name is Cindy at Simply Cindy. I appreciate you going, uh, again watching with me. If you've never seen me, go back and watch the first uh, chapter if this is your first time seeing me. Uh, I am veering off a little bit. Let's just say I'm expanding my channel, which I said I was going to do, but I'm expanding my channel into reading uh, different books. Now, the other book series that I'm doing is completely opposite. It's more of what I'm used to reading, what I'm used to doing. So um, <clears throat> it has to do, it's called the inner book, the inner work. So if you guys are interested in that, I will be starting that up. Um, but it's more of a, like, we're going to be learning, we're going to be healing some wounds. It's a little bit more, like, you're going to really need to take some time with each video because we're going to be, like, opening wounds, scraping some wounds, healing some wounds, getting to know ourselves better. That's a little bit more of that. So... In the last one, it looks like they had their first kiss, Tessa and the detective. Um, yeah, their first kiss. And it looks like she was, it looks like poison. It looks like belladonna, which I love the fact that they named the herbs because if you guys don't know, I'm an herbalist. So uh, the belladonna and what it does. And let's see where this goes. So chapter 13, it's looking like we'll do about three chapters a video. Here we go. Chapter 13. Sleep was impossible. The clock on the mantel read 11.50. As I tossed my legs over the edge of the bed, <sighs> how was I supposed to sleep when every time I closed my eyes, I imagined him kissing me against the display of spells? <laughs> At this rate, I'd be out of sleeping powder by the end of the week or overdose and wind up, a 30 year, wind up in a 30-year coma. At least then, I wouldn't have to worry about Argus or solving a murder. Who knew sleep could fix such a wide array of problems? I groaned and fell back to sleep against the mattress. <sighs> Focus on the case. Count suspects or something. According to Derek's everyone's a suspect rule, there were more suspects than sleep. I'd be, s sleep. I'd be asleep in no time. Or not. Lighting a candle, I sat and watched the clock march its way towards midnight. When the bell chimed, a chill froze the breath in front of my face. In the corner of the room, a glow began to take shape and grow stronger. Welcome back. Ella floated towards me, her hemline, the hemline of her ball grown skimming the floorboards. She reached the foot of my bed and twisted the folds of her skirt. In her fingers sorry to wake you my ha my hauntings aren't exactly at a decent hour <clears throat> it's okay I can't sleep it's actually nice to have the company yeah that just reminds me that's kind of what happens with me as a medium now when I was a child so this is going off topic let me know if you want to hear the story and I'll tell you in the next one about me being interrupted while I was sleeping as a child, but I don't do that. That doesn't happen anymore unless other things happen. But I'll explain if y'all want to. If y'all want me to tell you, okay, it's okay. I can't sleep. It it's actually nice to have the company. This place can get kind of quiet. You'd think by now I'd be using, I'd be used to living alone. But I miss having others around. I know what you mean. I used to feel lonely when my father was away on business. When he told me he was getting married. And I'd be getting a new stepsister. I was so excited. Many of my memories are gone. But I know that even after they arrive, I still felt alone. 
She drifted closer to the nightstand and fluttered her fingers towards the candle flame. The light didn't waver, but she held her hand in it, staring at the range orange blaze. Does anyone miss me? The question caught me off guard and made me think about our legacies. My mother had left behind numerous people she'd helped over the years, but besides Vivian, would anyone miss me? I wasn't so sure. A few customers were likely planning to dance on my grave for ruining their lives with one of my spells. Of course people miss you. I know it's difficult to believe, but your stepmother seemed genuinely upset. It was a strange commiserating it was strange commiserating with a ghost. I think family can be a blessing and a curse. Even loving relationships can have cracks. Those cracks stay with us and make it difficult to relate to other people. That's so true. She resumed playing with the candle. Something tells me you're speaking from experience. Guilty. My mother loved me, but she couldn't hide her disappointment in my abilities. The harder I tried, the bigger I failed. Now that she's gone, I can't bear to see the look on her on other people's faces. Is that why you don't want the detective to get too close? He'll only be disappointed. I don't know, she smiled softly. Here you are, trying to solve a murder case to help a ghost. We'd never even met before I, before I came to your shop. I'm a perfect stranger. Disappointments don't help strangers. My motives aren't squeaky clean. The reward does have something to do with it. Ella shrugged. No one expects you to work for free. I'm a regular saint then, I sighed, <laughs> taking a deep breath. A deep dive into my stunted emotional growth wasn't going to catch a killer or pay the bills. It would only lead to breaking out the elderberry wine and drowning my sorrows. Elderberry wine, that kind of sounds good. <clears throat> I don't drink wine. I don't drink anymore. The last thing I need, the last thing I needed was to get drunk. Actually, there is something I need to ask about ask you about. What's that? We learned something about your case. It appears you might have been poisoned. Poisoned? Ella's eyes widened. Are you sure? Her fingers brushed her temple as if it could help her remember. Yes, I'm positive. We found traces of belladonna in your wine glass. It can make you confused and delusional. It would have weakened your defenses. Have you ever heard of it of that plant before? No, never. She floated closer, her fingers curling into fists. I must have been helpless. Her struggle with the killer flashed in my mind, and I went numb. No wonder death helped you forget. Seeing it through her eyes had been more than enough. Actually experiencing that kind of overwhelming fear, I shuddered. You fought back as best you can. Tomorrow, Derek and I are going to search for the source of the poison. We're going to find the person who did this to you. I know you will. I trust you. Ella drifted towards the door. Try to sleep. You don't need me haunting you all night. If you don't mind, I'll hang around your shop for a while. Don't worry, I can't touch anything. <laughs> I'm cute. I laughed. Remind me to lay out some spells for you next time. It will give you something to read. Do you have any love spells? Those are my favorite. My eyes squeezed shut. I had almost put the kiss out of my mind. Yeah, I have a few. They're my best sellers. <clears throat> Dawn broke through the curtain. It was too early to get up given my night had involved discovering poisons, alluring detectives, and conversations with ghosts. But I rubbed my bleary eyes and unwound my legs from the blanket, reaching for a thick robe that hung next to my bed. Cocooned inside a heavy fabric, I considered going back to sleep, but my eyes popped wide open when a horse neighed in the yard. Impossible! <laughs> I scooted off the bed and peered through the window, blinking at the sight of the Royal Agency's carriage parked on the gravel road. Apparently, when Derek had said morning, he meant first thing. Like before breakfast and before normal people get out of bed. At a knock on the door, I whimpered in protest. Tessa, darting 
in front of the mirror, I managed the bags under my eyes and examined the pillow creases imprinted on my pale cheek. Girl, she slept hard when she slept. <laughs> Running a brush through my hair only made static fizz fuzz the ends. Tessa, open up. I'm coming. Give me a second. As the door shook from another round of knocking, I pitched color into my cheeks and tightened my robe. It would have to do. There wasn't time for me for the beautification spell. Not that I trusted myself with one. They tended to have the opposite effect. It's because she's already beautiful. I hurried down the steps and opened the door, my gaze narrowing on the ill-timed intruder. You're early. Witches need their beauty sleep. Derek's gaze traveled from my unruly hair all the way down to my bare feet. In a slow but thorough pursual, his mouth hitched. We don't have that much time. My lip curled <clears throat> in a grumpy snarl. Did you expect a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed witch ready to conquer the day and hunt killers? You don't pay me enough. I'm not paying you at all. That's a conversation for later. I waved him into the shop, then headed for the stairs. Wait down here. Make tea or something. Tea? He gaped as if no one had ever asked him to perform such a men <laughs> menial task. Yes, tea. Leaves are in the cupboard by the window. Water's at the pump. And I know you can start a fire. I'm going to change. He began to protest, but I shot him a, <clears throat> a grim look. That he buckled beneath. Or maybe it had more to do with my wild hair than any sense of authority. <laughs> At the top of the stairs, my stomach rumbled and I shouted, Make toast too! There's bread in the pantry! <clears throat> he grumbled something un unintelligible, and I relished the image of, a, of the gruff detective making me breakfast. Early morning visitors weren't so bad after all. Especially the fresh-shaved kind, who wore perfectly tailored, tailored clothes that accentuated their broad chest and arms. All before daybreak. No spells needed. I lingered in front of my wardrobe until the kettle whistle blew, then pulled a hunter green tunic dress from my shoulders. A leather strap clenched my waist. My hair took more time, refusing to stay in a simple braid to keep a thick strand out of my face. I frowned in the full-length mirror. <clears throat> I felt plain. It was, fool it was a foolish thought that had me questioning its origins. A witch didn't impress with her clothes. She impressed with her spells. Too bad I was zero for two. Needing a little something extra... I rifled through my mother's jewelry box. She had collected odd. She had collected odd but compelling pieces. Her favorite pendant rested at the bottom, strung on a metal chain. It was the size of a large coin and shaped into the oval, into an oval with an inlaid cat's eye stone. I hooked the chain around my neck, pleased with how the pendant complemented the dress. Some of my plainliness slipped away. Derek pinned me with a pensive stare from his place near my workbench as I descended the creaky stairs. There wasn't a smirk on his face as his gaze traveled through my body. As his gaze traveled over my body, sorry. <laughs> as if to confirm, there was nothing plain about me. I couldn't find any jam. He ran a hand through his hair in a sheepish confession. His collar was unbuttoned. His hair still wet at the ends. He looked nothing like the arrogant detective who had visited my shop the mornings of Ella's murder. My stomach clenched under the weight of his gaze. I wondered if he saw the same witch. Jam's in the pantry. It's right next to the bread. Right, right, he winced. I hope you're better at finding killers than locating breakfast items. He shrugged and took a sip of his mug. I have a cook. She makes my meals must be nice it seems you've done all right by yourself the tea's hot and the bread is sliced evenly i'll let it slide this time reaching for the plate i ripped off a hunk of bread derek watched me chew now i know where you're keeping now i know where you keep the jam i'll get it right next i'll get it right next time 
next time? <laughs> oh, his words caused the bread to catch in the back of my throat. <clears throat> I coughed to loosen it, feeling heat, feeling heat climb my neck. Would there be a next time? And why did the thought make me want to get up even earlier and greet him with something other than a surly attitude and a tangled hair? I downed my tea, letting the hot liquid burn the roof of my mouth. Let's get a move on, detective. I collected his mug before he could finish, swiping it out of his hands. He didn't argue, but gave me a strange look, which I ignored. I ignored him in the carriage, too. We parked in front of the apothecary. <laughs> Oh my god, the games, the games. Okay. We parked in front of the apothecary. <clears throat> a light frost painted curly cues on the paned windows, and I shivered beneath the thick fabric of my cloak. Snow flurries tangled in my hair and stuck to my eyelashes. Each flake melted on contact. The air tasted the first bite of winter. I rubbed my numbs. I rubbed my numb fingers to together and blew into the palms of my hands. <sighs> Derek stood beside me, his gaze on the hanging sign. It swayed in the wind, whining on the rusty hinge. A bustling crowd surged around us, their heads low against the bracing chill. Ever been to the apothecary? I asked shuffling closer to Derek to avoid being trampled by the merchants hauling a large sack over his shoulder. Noticing my near miss, Derek guided me in, in front of him. The crowd funneled on either side of us, keeping me out, keeping me out trampling range. No, I prefer being treated by a medical professional. You mean old Sawbones McAllister? I guess you don't enjoy living. I shuddered. The so-called doctor considered leeches to be a medical advancement. Derek nudged me toward the entrance. I enjoy living just fine. The iron handle felt icy against my palm. Caught in the warm confines between Derek and the door, I paused, reluctant to go inside. You know, there's a lot to be said about natural remedies. I bet you didn't know that ginger root can relieve cold symptoms and peppermint leaves can help with indigestion. In fact, I trailed off when I noticed Derek's eyes glazing over and elbowed him under the ribcage. You're not listening. Yeah, I, I, I get that. <laughs> okay, back to it. Catching my hand, he trapped it between his own and frowned as he rubbed the warmth back into my fingers. I'm paying attention. Tilting his head, he cast a wry look. I'm sorry, a reary look. Oh my gosh. Tilting his head, he cast a weary look into the streets. I pretended to straighten his coat and glanced over his shoulder. A burly man with a turned-up collar lurked in the shadow of a shop canopy. Another man, lanky and grizzled, hovered near a wall of fly flyers. Do you know those men? he asked. Apprehension nodded my stomach. I did know them. More importantly, they knew me. Argus's goons were getting sloppy. Unless they wanted me to see them, which was certainly possible, I ignored their less than subtle in intimidation. He had given me until the end of the month to pay my debt, so they'd leave me alone until then. The bigger problem was keeping Derek from making the connection between me and the unsavory thugs. No, I've never seen them before. The lie burned in my throat. <laughs> I knew it made things more complicated, but I couldn't tell him the truth. Our partnership was rocky at best, and any hint I might have an ulterior motive would let would get me thrown off the case. After my talk with Ella, I couldn't jeopardize her trust. It was better this way. I could handle Argus on my own. Derek's lips thinned. He stared me down, searching for the lie. I was seamless. <clears throat> Plastering a smile on my face, I pushed open the door. Waves of heat instantly thawed my bones, and I breathed in the sulfurous smell mixed with the invasive pungent herbs. A weaker constitution would have run screaming, would have everyone screaming. 
Derek nearly did. He covered his nose with his coat sleeve. Come here. I laughed and pulled him towards his bowl of waxy substance. Hold this. I dabbed some of it onto his fingertips and lifted it near his nose. It's lemon balm to mask the smell. It's also very calming. He relaxed under the pleasant scent, breathing normally again. And you wonder why I avoid places like this. Can I help you? A woman emerged from the back of the room and rounded the counter. <clears throat> Her gray apron covered a long purple gown with wide sleeves. Yes, yes you can. I'm Detective Chambers from the Royal Agency, and this is my assistant, Miss Daniels. We're looking for information regarding a specific herb and the names of anyone who supplies it. The woman hesitated, eyeing us cautiously. Uncomfortable silence fell, filled the room. Derek, <coughs> excuse me, Derek cleared his throat. We'll need a list of, you have a beautiful shop, I interrupted, admiring a display of glass jars. I hear you have the largest selection of aromatic oils in the kingdom. I dabble myself, but I haven't mastered the extraction process. Do you prefer the steam method? The woman gave me an encouraging smile. I do prefer the steam method. It enhances the oils. I didn't realize you practiced perfumery. I nodded and leaned in conspiratorially, gesturing towards Derek with my chin. A little, but this one doesn't appreciate my ho hobby. He calls it frivolous. She huffed. Men never appreciate the skill. The woman extended her hand. Please, call me Ada. Derek rolled his eyes at my performance. I ignored him. If I'd let him keep going, we'd have gotten nowhere. Merchants didn't give up their own. Thank you, Ada. You see, we're here with a bit of a problem. And since you're the reigning authority on medical herbs, we came directly to you. Ada preened, smoothing an elbow, sorry, smoothing an ebony lock of hair tucked behind her ears. Whatever you need. <clears throat> I motioned for Derek to continue, sending him a wink for good measure. As I was saying, we need a list of anyone who supplied Belladonna root. Ada bit her lip. I don't stock that here, and I can't think of any reputable shop that does. What about non-reputable ones? Derek asked. Ada grew silent. She looked around the empty shop as if the jars had ears, then inched closer, her voice barely a whisper. There is one I know of, but you didn't hear it from me. We waited, eager for the answer, but she backed away when the bell above the shop jingled. Welcome! An old lady bustled inside, complaining about her aching joints, and Ada led her to the shelf along with along the wall to select a cream. I'll be right back, she said to the customer before making her way to the adjoining room. Derek groaned as another couple entered the shop. She'll never talk to us like this. Should we come back? If we leave, she might change her mind about talking to altogether. Then what do we do? I bounced nervously on my heels. Ada reappeared and nodded towards the customers, then brushed past me, slipping a folded piece of paper into my hands. Without stopping, she continued on, <clears throat> ushering the customer to a large table filled with canisters. Let's go. I showed Derek the paper concealed in my palm. Back on the street, he led me down a quiet alley that shielded us from the public view. What does it say? I unfolded the note. It says, Flame Lock Den. Where's that? Derek frowned taking the note from my hand. You asked for the non-reputable shop, I pointed out. Flamelock Den isn't really a shop, more of a hole in the wall. It's part of what we in the biz call, like to call <clears throat> the black market. Derek cut me off and lifted an accusing brow. Very good. I tucked my arm through his and peered into his scowling face. I'm afraid they don't let members of the Royal Agency wander around there. You'll need someone who can get you in and that detective is why you're lucky to have me <laughs> chapter 14 i can't believe you talked me into this explain to me again why you're forcing me to wear tweed derek grumbled as he tossed his charcoal vest and black woolen coat over the wooden dressing screen 
His dress shirt followed, and I smothered a grin along with the wink, along with the wicked thought of him standing behind there without a shirt. Handing the snidely reference coat around the screen, I replied, Because you wouldn't let me change your clothes with a spell. I believe your exact words were, Tessa, you don't have a good history with delusions. <laughs> That's true. You don't. <clears throat> How kind of you to remind me. Either way, it doesn't matter. You needed to change. It's called going undercover. I'm sure you've heard of it. Oh, I've heard of it. But for someone who has yet to explain how she knows so much about the black market, you're enjoying my discomfort a little too much. Discomfort? I selected a matching tweed flap cap from a rack. I hardly think changing your outfit falls under discomfort. You'll draw too much attention if you walk around wearing expensive wool and a starch collar. And I doubt you own anything of lower quality. <clears throat> the screen rattled where Derek bumped into it. He muffled a curse. And I bit the side of my cheek to keep from laughing. Cursing again. This time, he poked his head around the screen. Something's wrong with the shirt. It's itchy. He... <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know. He pulled the fabric away from his skin and scratched furiously at the sides, eyes narrowing at the guilty press of my lips. You did this, didn't you? Some sort of spell. Of course not. I'd never use my magic for evil. Besides, I don't have a good history with spells. Now, come here. He stalked from behind the screen, frowned firmly in place. I stood on my toes to place the cap on his head, admiring the way the linen clung to his muscular frame. Derek fidgeted, unable to get comfortable, and scratched the back of his neck where the shirt collar met the skin. Maybe I shouldn't have cast that, the spell, but I couldn't resist. His lack of confidence in my magic was irritating, so I'd made his shirt irritating. <laughs> Seemed like a fair trade. <laughs> Hold still, I muttered, sliding my knuckles down the back of his neck and over his shoulder. He tensed at my touch, but instantly relaxed as the irritation spell faded. I knew it, he caught my hand. You're a vengeful witch. His thumb stroked the center of my palm, and I felt the contact all the way down my toes. Now, tell me the truth. Tweet suits you. I tucked my hand from his and straightened the lapels on the jacket. I had to admit, he was even more handsome in the casual coat with his shirt unbuttoned at the neckline and the cap at the single at the slight angle in this in his formal suit he looked r remote and formidable but dressed like he was now the opposite he looked approachable derek stared at me that's one truth but not the one i was hoping for oh i thought you were fishing for compliments i patted his chest then turn only for him to catch my wrist and pull me back. Tessa, regardless of your attempts to inflict painful spells on me, I need to know how deep your association goes with illegal activity. Is there anything I should be worried about, or anyone? He let the question hang in the air. The truth was, on the tip of my tongue, I'm indebted to an underground kingpin and occasionally purchase illicit ingredients for my spells, but I shook my head. <clears throat> but I shook my head. Most of what I know is secondhand, and as far as the market, I've only been one time that you know of. He released my wrist, taking me at my word. The small act of trust made me wince and rub the twinge in my chest. I needed to stop lying. <sighs> but then I'd look at Derek and feel the fragile thread of our partnership tighten and nearly snap. I hated lies. Hated that I had to hide the real me when I was getting glimpses of the real Derek. He wouldn't understand. Wasn't the type. His look of disappointment was what I feared the most, and that fear was growing stronger after each encounter. So now, 
The mere thought of it salted my old wounds. He needed me to be more. Ella needed me to be more, too. And with her familial line of dead, judgmental witches as my witness, I'd try to be. Even if I had to fake it. The merchant approached and cleared his throat. <clears throat> Shall I add the items to your account, detective? When he wrote the purchases in the ledger and calculated the co cost, I choked at the sum. For casual attire, it was insanely expensive. Yes, and add these two. Derek retrieved a pair of dove-grade leather gloves from a shelf. He guessed the size and handed them to me. And before you say anything, I won't add the cost to your fines. I can still do magic with these on. I teased. Your shirts aren't safe. <laughs> The hint of a smile played around his lips. I don't doubt that. Wear them anyway. Your fingers are always cold. I breathed through the tightness of my throat and acted like the gift hadn't annihilated my defenses. He noticed how cold my fingers were. The magic was harder when my hands were freezing, slipping them on. I let my eyes drift shut. The supple leather felt like heaven against my skin. I'd never owned anything as luxurious. You like them? I opened my eyes to find Derek watching me with satisfaction. Yes, very much. Thank you. They're lovely. A flicker of guilt made me admit. And I apologize for casting the irritating, irritant spell on your shirt. That was childish. Amusing, but childish. He thanked the merchant, then turned me by the shoulder toward the door breath brushing against my cheek as if I leaned in to whisper. Apology accepted. I'm sorry. And as he leaned, let me read that again. He thanked the merchant, then returned. Goodness, I can't sing right, read right now. <clears throat> he thanked the merchant, then turned me by the shoulders towards the door, breath brushing against my cheeks as he leaned in to whisper. Apology accepted. But just so you know, I never get mad. I get even. Oh. <laughs> Hurry up or we'll be late. I took a shortcut through the dingy alley. The smell of decay hung in the air between the buildings. And if we saw anyone, they scurried out of the way, keeping to themselves. This part of town wasn't exactly savory. Best not to make eye contact, if you could help it. The alley emptied into a busy street and I scan this the crowd over there by the lamppost Derek followed my gaze that's him he's a child don't let him hear you say that Finn's sensitive about his age he takes care of his mother not the other way around on these streets that deserves respect we approached the young boy leaning against the lamppost. He had flat gray eyes, shaggy brown hair, and a curl to his lips that said bugger. Sorry, and a curl to his lips that said bugger off. <clears throat> Finn straightened when he saw us, his expression narrowing on Derek. It's all right, Finn. He's with me. You working with the agency now, Tess? Just doing them a favor. Did you bring it? Finn dug into his pants pocket sorry Finn dug into his pants pocket and tossed me a medallion three blocks west the abandoned warehouse thanks Finn I tousled his hair and he cringed kneeling at his side I slid a bag off my shoulder I stopped at the magic shop after I sent for you this is for your mother's headaches make sure she takes it with food one teaspoon a day and a glass of water I pulled a jar of yellow powder from the bag, and he nodded solemnly, accepting the responsibility. And these are for you. I dropped a packet of peppermint candies into his outstretched palms. Finn unwrapped one of the mints and tucked it, it into the side of his cheek. He grinned. The boy might not like to be called a child, but he had a child's sweet tooth. I looked up at Derek. Pay the man. Derek stifled a smile and handed over it. Ten royal co coins. Finn eyed the money 
but didn't take it. What's wrong? Ben scratched the back of his neck. Tessa said not to accept anything less than 20. <laughs> I love it. Uh, she did, huh? That sounds like something she'd say. Derek upped the amount and Finn pocketed the coins. I stood and brushed the dirt from my knees. Next time, Finn, wait for 25. Now, run home and give the powder to your mother. And when you run out, come by the shop. Finn nodded and shot Derek another leery glare. If you need help with this one, Tess, you know where to find me. He popped a peppermint into his mouth and disappeared into the crowd. He's so cute. <laughs> I flipped the medallion and showed it to Derek. This will get us into the market. They don't let you in without one. And even if they did, the market moves around. Ben helps some of the vendors, so he always knows the way. He seems protective of you. How did you meet him? His mother is sick. He can't afford a doctor. He came to came by the shop one day, and I caught him trying to steal one of my potions. I have a pretty stringent no-stealing policy. After I threatened to turn him into a crow if I ever caught him stealing again, I went to visit his mother. Ever since, I make sure she has medicinal powder she needs. So he has one less thing to worry about. He's a good kid. Derek grinned. That, that almost makes me want to forgive you for telling him to hustle more money out of me. What can I say? Teach a kid to fish and he'll catch fish. Teach a kid to negotiate and people will catch fish for him. <laughs> I don't know whether to laugh or call you a genius. Clearly I'm a genius, detective. <clears throat> he tucked a strand of hair behind my ear and let his fingers graze my graze along my jaw. He tucked a strand of hair behind my ear and let his fingers grave along my jaw. Graze along my jaw. Let me read that a third time. Oh my goodness. He tucked a strand of hair behind my ears and let his fingers graze along my jaw. What do you do for Finn? What you do for Finn matters, Tessa. You have a good heart. I shrugged. It's no big deal. It is. You're constantly surprising me. His gaze softened and I flushed, not sure what to do with his approval. All I knew was it did a funny thing inside my insides. <laughs> Oh, we walked the three blocks west and found abandoned, the abandoned warehouse. Its entrance covered, its entrance covered with stains, burlap sheets. I ducked beneath it and followed Derek down the dark hallway. Then the next, a couple of men standing guard by another door gave us the once over, but I showed them the medallion and they let us through. The market lay sprawled inside of vast, the vast ruins, bricks and mortar littered the ground along the broken beams. Thick canvas awnings were strung over the woods, creating makeshift stalls. And where the roof had caved in ages ago, midday sun caught dust motes in, in the air and made them glisten. Exotic animals in gilded cages squawked and pecked as we passed. One even called out, in a strange cry. Give me a cracker and I'll tell you where the gold is hidden. <laughs> That's cute. Derek hesitated, but I waved my hand, dismissing the parrot. It's a scam. He'll say anything for a cracker. I inhaled the seductive scent of spices smuggled in from foreign kingdoms. As we weaved through the thin crowd, Derek remained close, too close. His sharp eyes missed nothing as he steered me around a transaction of daggers made with enchanted steel. A young blonde woman wearing a teal scarf over her face tossed an apple into the air, then flipped the dagger, slicing it clean through the crisp fruit. Enchanted steel isn't illegal. You don't have to give it such a wide berth. I glanced over my shoulder in awe. Maybe not, <clears throat> but it's a, but it's damn sharp. And I don't need a bloody witch on my hands. Come on, detective. I'm not foolish enough to walk in between a knife demonstration. Derek's grip on my arm tightened, yanking me back as a blade whizzed by my face, nearly clipping off my nose. It sank into a post. 
The hilt vibrated from the forest. Sorry. That one got away from me. The blonde woman tossed up her hands before returning her attention to the customers. You were saying? Derek growled in my ear. That could have happened to anyone. Unlikely. He maintained a loose hold on my arm as we continued to walk. Near the back was the stall called Flamelock Den, and I was miffed to find it empty. Merchandise lay strewn across a scarred table, but merchandise was nowhere in sight. Sorry. <clears throat> Let me read that again. Near the back of the wall, near the back, Jesus. Let me try that again. Near the back was the stall called Flem Dock Den, and I was miffed to find it empty. Merchandise lay strewn across a scarred table, but the merchant was nowhere to be nowhere in sight. Instead, a swarthy man wearing a black tunic and trousers slipped out of the shadows. Derek tensed, and and before I could say anything, the man swept up my hand and leaned over it, brushing his whiskered lips against my knuckles. Tessa, my love, my favorite customer. I squirmed out of his grip and made a slicing motion at my neck. Eyes wide, I spoke between the clenched teeth. Charlie, Charlie is it? I can hardly remember since we only met the one time. Understanding the quick draw on the and Charlie rubbed his beard underneath his chin. That's right. It was the one time. You're hard to forget, my love. And who would want to? His praise was over the top and like, likely dished out to every skirt that walked past. But it caused Derek to bristle. He made a sound behind me, and I could practically feel, feel his displeasure burning a hole through my cloak. It was distracting. There was no way he believed my story about the market now. Why had I bothered to mislead him? Charlie, this is Derek. He's a Roy. I stopped, realizing my mistake. We hadn't discussed a suitable cover story, and I'd almost botched it. Horrified, I changed directions. He's a colleague. Charlie furrowed his bushy eyebrows. You mean, he's a warlock? A bark of nervous laughter burst on my lips. No, what I mean was, what I meant was, my mind emptied and I grappled for words like a flustered idiot. Why had I, why had I said colleague? Anything else would have been better. Acquaintance, a buyer, a friend. I should have said friend. He's a fr- Derek's arm snaked around my waist and pulled me firmly against him, cutting off my introduction. Tessa, don't be embarrassed. <clears throat> I froze, heart thudding violently in my chest <laughs> as his head lowered. His breath ruffled my hair, firing every nerve ending. My body seemed to know his intentions before my brain, and I arched my back as he pressed a possessive kiss against my skin. Tell him the truth, he murmured. I won't be mad. I never get mad. I get even. That was in his thought. He wasn't wasting any time exacting his revenge for my spell. The devil actually thought he had the upper hand. And maybe he did, for a moment. As his mouth dropped to my collarbone, warm lips sending a shivering, cursing, coursing, sending a shiver coursing through my body. He was a dead man. A wicked grin spread across Charlie's face. No explanation needed. He winked and reached under the counter, glancing covertly in both directions it's obvious why you're here i have just the thing he placed a vial of blue liquid onto the table since you're a preferred one-time customer only i'll give you a discount all color drained from my face derek nuzzled my neck and whispered what's that unease tinged his voice it should take a guess i turned in his i turned in his arm and kept up the ruse. Charlie thinks we want a, to spice up things. Winding my hand around his neck, I watched Derek's eyes darken when he made the connection. My fingers lazily mused the hair at his nape, and I bit my lip until his gaze dropped to my mouth. 
still interesting still interested in getting your revenge this way sweetheart his throat worked and his chest expanded on a sharp inhale i almost pitied the man up to you his voice was deeper than normal affected it was such a shame we had to solve a murder maybe next time i pouted for charlie's benefit and dis disentangled myself from derek's body the things i did for ghosts actually we're looking for something else i'm nothing if not your servant my love charlie grinned laying the charm on thick hoping to make a sale derek sent him deadly a deadly look and hooked his arm around my waist Ugh, men i'd reached my limit for flattery and petty jealousy apparently i had one who knew but with derek's all too quick revenge making my skin tingle i was suddenly surly what i needed was a glass of wine and a good spell book everyone else could go count frogs yeah <laughs> that's what i think one of my potions calls for belladonna it's impossible to find but if anyone knows where i can get it it's you charlie smirked at my appeal to his vanity that's a slightly more dangerous aphrodisiac too much and you wind up dead I winked. Then let's hope I get the dose right. Where can we get some? This time of year, I'd say nowhere. But as it happens, I've heard of someone who deals. The name will cost you, and it's all I got. More phantom than anything else. Tracking it down will be up to you. Derek withdrew a sum of money and placed it on the counter. Charlie made a quick count and flashed his teeth. That's it? I don't take less than 50. I coughed. <clears throat> Flacing, face flaming. Oh, really? That sounds familiar. Derek narrowed his eyes. Take it or leave it. Derek, I hissed. Now wasn't the time to see who had the bigger negotiating skills. His arm tightened around me and ultimately hung in the charged silence. Charlie rolled his tongue over his teeth and snorted. Fine. He pocketed the coins. You're looking for Iron Hazel. Or Iron Hazel? That's all I know. The name wasn't familiar. Thanks, Charlie. Anytime, my love. He nudged the vial of blue liquid toward me while Derek wrote the name on his notebook. My gift to you. Discreetly, I snapped up the vial. Never turn away free potion. It was a witch's creed. Also, good business sense. We moved away from Charlie's stall. Was that necessary? Derek shrugged. It felt good. Well, as long as it felt good, fisting my hands on my lip, I asked, Where to next? Want to see a dragon's egg encased in amber? They're that way. I pointed deeper into the market. Dragons aren't real. It's probably a painted goose egg they placed in amber, so you can't tell the difference. Aren't you a killjoy? Even if it's fake, it's still interesting. We shouldn't hang around this place longer than needed. It's asking for trouble. We got what we came for. Actually, we got more than what we came for. Hand it over. Hand what over? I danced out of his reach as he tried to capture my glove fist. Tessa, I'm warning you. He sidestepped a vendor juggling illuminating marbles and stalked closer. But it was a gift, like the gloves. You can't take away my gifts. It's rude. Rude? So is lying about how many times you've come here. One time, huh? He fiended left and went right i fell for it and stumbled onto him holding my hand in the air as if it didn't make me f my fist level with his forehead lowering in defeat i unfurled my fingers the blue vial rested in my palm fine take it some of my surliness slipped through and i snapped a cold-hearted detective like yourself needs it more than i do anyway cold-hearted his feature hardened he snatched the vial and backed us up until <clears throat> my shoulders bumped the wooden post caging me in with his body is that what you call is that what you think um no there was nothing cold about the look in his eyes it left a trail of heat across my skin i squared my shoulders trapped between him and the post and tried to regain the upper hand 
what was the that back there? You shouldn't have pretended we were together in front of Charlie. It wasn't fair. Do witches play fair? <clears throat> no. But we're witches. It comes with the name. You're a detective. My fingers curled in the lapel of his tweed jacket, tugged him closer. You're honorable, reserved. He went motionless beneath my hand, and I pressed myself closer still, molding against him, a man of virtue. His breath grew harsh as we stared each other down, and I stood on my toes to whisper in his ears, Don't stoop to my level. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't stoop to my level, detective. With sober features, he slipped the vial into his pocket. Don't underestimate me, Tessa. And stop lying. If you lie to me again, we're through. I mean it. He grazed a knuckle under my chin. Whatever it is, I can handle it. I don't know. Sometimes men say they can handle it. Right, ladies? Okay, chapter 15. I'm sorry, I had to take a drink. My throat was getting dry. Okay, chapter 15. After a few days later, I woke to the sound of pounding on my front door. Shading my eyes from the sun, peeking through the curtains, I smiled. Another early wake-up call from Derek? What should I have him make for make me for breakfast this morning? Did I dare try for a poached egg? Rolling to my feet, I padded to the mirror and checked my appearance. Not terrible. Instead of a ratty mess, my dark curls had freshly tousled, a freshly tasseled look. Combing the long strand forward, I hurried to the wardrobe and pulled on a wine-colored dress. The pounding sounded again, and I yelled over my shoulder, Just a minute! <clears throat> I flew down the stairs and came to an abrupt halt on the last step. Sylvia Traeger peered through the window pane. She wrapped her cane against the glass. Hurry up, dear. It's freezing out here. The smile slipped from my face. I felt a pang of disappointment. What was wrong with me? I'd been acting smitten for days, taking extra time with my appearance, grinning like a fool when we stopped for lunch, a regular occurrence now, and soaking up all those moments when I'd catch Derek watching me with a gaze that made my heart pound. Anyone who knew me would shake their head in pity. <laughs> Even I would shake my head in pity and then burn some, pay some sage to clear the air of second-hand embarrassment. Sylvia barged inside and smacked me with a rolled newsprint. You sly girl. After all the nonsense you spouted about not being interested in marriage, no wonder you didn't attend the ball. I want details. And tea. Get me tea. Which, my lovelies, is why we call it tea when you're spilling the tea. <laughs> Sylvia, what are you talking about? I swung the kettle over the coals and stoked them back to life. I'm talking about the Ever Gazette. She tapped the newspaper with her bony fingers. That's a gossip rag. More society pages than news. Didn't I tell you to stop reading it? She made a shh sound and waved me away. There's truth in every rumor, and I want the truth from you about this. The paper crinkled as it flattened, as I flattened, as she flattened it against the table. Funny, she wasn't the only one demanding my honesty these days. Derek's ultimatum rang in my ears. Tell the truth or else. The truth about what? The front page. Take a look for yourself. Apprehension made me approach the paper like it was a snake in the grass. When I got closer, my stomach dropped. A hand-drawn image of me standing under the eaves of the apothecary shop covered the front page. But I wasn't alone. The moment had seemed innocent at the time. But the way the artist captured it told a different story. Derek stood in front of me, his hands closed around mine. Our heads bent together as if we were sharing an intimate secret. The headline made it worse. Agency's famed detective has fallen under a witch's spell. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's not good. I jabbed the illusion. It wasn't like that. We were uh, canoodling. We were not. Heat flushed my cheeks. 
at least not there. Give us a couple of hours and stroll through the black market, and then, yeah. Good thing the artist hadn't witnessed that exchange. <clears throat> Detective Chambers and I are working together to solve Ella Lockwood's murder. This is taken completely out of context. Sylvia winked. His expression says differently, my dear. A man hasn't looked at me that way in ages. They drew him like that to sell papers. It's gossip fodder. Nothing more. Gossip or not, it's a fantastic likeness. You'll get more customers from this. Everyone reads the Gazette. Which meant everyone would know about my association with Derek. And it wouldn't take any effort to discover my role in this case. I worried my lip between my teeth. Public curiosity was one thing, but the scrutiny could become a problem. Crossing the fireplace, I removed the kettle and blanked the coals. Sorry, Sylvia, I have to go to town. There's no no time for tea. Are you going to visit your detective? He's not my detective. I retrieved my cloak and ushered Sylvia out the door. She paused on the landing. I want to meet the man. Bring him by my bring him by for a meal. Fuzzle Bottoms and I will judge whether you two are a good match. No way, Sylvia. You and I, you and your cat, aren't getting involved. But I already promised Fuzzy. You know how much he enjoys the company. His tail gets all fluffy. Unbelievable. This was my life now. Catering to a nosy neighbor and her dreaded cat while wading through the quicksand that was my partnership with Derek. Tack on murder with a sight of hauntings and a permanent vacation from the kingdom was staring. Sorry. Tack on murder with a sight of hauntings. And a permanent vacation from the kingdom was starting to sound like a good idea. I'll think about it. I guided Sylvia down the walkway and set her in the direction of her house. Wonderful. What's his favorite meal? Rosemary chicken and glazed potatoes. Sylvia narrowed her eyes. That's your favorite, dear. Well, what do you know? It's kismet. <laughs> there was no way I'd submit Derek to Sylvia's meddling but maybe, if I was lucky, I'd get a home-cooked meal out of it, out of the lie. She sniffed the air and made a face before trudging back to her cottage. Derek would be furious. He hadn't wanted me around to begin with. And now, I was more involved than before, stealing myself for his lecture. I headed to town. <clears throat> The agency was busier than ever. Publicity from the paper had people standing around the entrance, hoping to catch a glimpse of the famed detective. Oh, God. Caverting with the local witch. I ducked down a side street and peered around the corner. So far, no one had spotted me, and I wanted to keep it that way. Scooting further down the alley and away from the onlookers, I noticed, I noticed someone break away from the crowd to follow behind. The urge to run vibrated in me. I needed to go in through the side entrance, since the last thing I wanted was to conduct interviews on the street. I scrambled backwards and collided into a stack of crates, which crashed to the ground, taking me with them. The man caught up and hovered over me, offering his hand. I sucked in a breath and rolled, trying to get out from beneath the crates. It was him. The man I'd found hiding in the hedges at the crime scene. Stay back. Adrenaline boiled my, mag my magic. I needed to regain some control before I could harness it. I saw you at the palace. The word slipped bravely from my mouth. An accusation I feared might do more harm than good. He took a step in my direction flexing his glove fingers. His face was all angled in sharp lines with deep-set brown eyes. He was younger than I'd thought, with thin lips pressed into a determined crease. Don't come any closer. I'm a witch. I'll turn you into a toad. Probably, hopefully, my lips trembled. I didn't want to die in an alley. 
a hundred feet from the Royal Agency. It wouldn't look good. I could see the headline now. Famed detectives Paramore found dead steps from help. Her spells couldn't save her. Detective swears to never love again. <laughs> the last part I added for my own benefit. I would be the dead party after all. So I should be mourned properly and with devotion. <laughs> That's what I say. The man deep voice captured my attention. I won't hurt you. No, I wouldn't advise that unless you want to eat flies and live the rest of your life or your days in the swamp. He shook his head and the hint of a smile curved his mouth. Great. My threats were funny to him. I just want to talk. You could have made an appointment. Will you at least listen to what I have to say? I won't come closer. I gave him a curt nod and climbed to my feet. Why are you hiding behind the hedges at the crime scene? And why did you threaten to con come for me? It wasn't a threat. I didn't know if I could trust it, the authorities. But you're not one of them. My story might be safer with you. Why can't you trust authorities? A dry laugh escaped my lips. Or escaped his lips, sorry. They work for the royal family. Their loyalty is with the king. Anything that puts the royal family in a bad light might be ignored. I could disappear. He had a point. Who are you? My name is Liam Barber. My name is Liam Barber. I was one of the servants assigned to the prince the night of the ball. I see. I relax. The fear drained from my muscles. What do you want to talk about? I need your promise that you won't tell anyone you spoke with me. His gaze darted at the end of the alley where the crowd mingled out of earshot. I'll keep your identity a secret. You have my word. What about your friend, Detective Chambers? I saw the papers. You can trust him. It was strange. But when I said the words, I believed them wholeheartedly. <clears throat> Tell me what you know, and we'll protect your name. Liam came within a feet of me and lowered his voice. The prince's alibi is fake. Regardless of what anyone told you, at the time of the murder, the prince wasn't in the ballroom. Shock made me silent for a few seconds while I, I processed his words. How do you know? Shortly before midnight, he traded masks with me. He's done it before at masquerade balls. I was the one who danced with Ella. She whispered something to me. She wanted me to meet her alone in the courtyard. Did you? Of course not. I stayed in the ballroom. That's why everyone thinks he has an alibi. He returned through the side door after midnight. He traded back. Minutes later, they found her body. The prince was lying? Where had he gone during the narrowing window of Ella's murder? And if he had killed her, what was the motive? Not to mention the motive for the other two women, one of whom had worked in the tavern and had likely never crossed paths with the prince in her life. I have to go. They'll question me if I'm gone too long. I don't know anything else, but I couldn't keep quiet after what happened to that poor girl. Thank you for coming forward. He nodded and backed away, leaving me alone in the alley. I had to tell Derek. This changed the course of our investigation. The prince might be our killer. Oh, all right, everyone, we're going to stop it there. Um, again, I hope you're having a good time. It's nice and interesting. I was kind of thinking that it was the prince a while back, but I was like, nah, that's too easy. <laughs> so we'll see. I'll see you guys in a couple of days. Bye.